Let's play Vindictus. Part one. All right, so this is Vindictus. And in Vindictus, you play as one of what looks like five classes. We've got a dude with antlers in the back that's coming soon, and a dude that's, uh, well, I guess you should say he's coming later, and a big dude on the right who's actually really big from what I've seen from the Korean screenshots who's coming soon on the right. And we've got a witch lady with a scythe that also has some spell casting. So she's kind of neat, and there's not really many other classes and games like her. I mean, I, I know you, from the from the cover, it looks like, you know, like maybe a dervish in Guild Wars or, or something along those lines, or maybe just a spellcaster. But really, she is a unique class, so I like playing as her. Uh, we've got a dual-wielding guy who's got uh, a lot of fast attacks, and even on the picture, he's only got one sword out. He is a, a strict dual-wielder. He always has two swords out, and he's very fast. He's also one of the few male characters in the game you can play as right now at the release. It looks like they'll have two more. Uh, but and then on the right side we have a, uh, I guess it's a shield uh, shield and uh, sword user who uses a lot of defense instead of just raw offense. So we have one defensive character, one magic character, and one raw just offensive character, though she can also be a raw offense dealer with, with slow attacks that do a lot of damage. So it's like DPS, tank, uh, kind of fast-moving DPS striker type guy who hits multiple enemies. So I guess that's that's how it's spread out. Or nuker, if you want to say that the lady's a nuker. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer on the screen. Sorry if it's not recording that. Anyway, so uh, on the right, um, what else was I going to say about her? Oh yeah, she kind of looks like uh, she's like the the lost triplet sister of you know one of the characters in uh, Soul Calibur or something. But the those three that use swords whose names I can't remember. Anyway, okay, that's enough of that. Let's just, uh, let's jump into the game, shall we? Eevee is a magician-type character that uses alchemy. Yes, I'm gonna be Eevee. So, now we've got this load screen, and, uh, it's interesting because this game, in case you could not tell from the way it looks, is made in the Source Engine. Which means it can run on older computers just fine, as long as you turn the graphics down. And it can run on DirectX 8, possibly even 7. I think it's. I think this one's an 8 version. So DirectX 8, 9, or 10. Get it together, rookie. Well, that was loud. Okay, so we've got uh, a spider. here is, is very beautifully done. It uh, looks like they used uh, probably Maya. They just strictly made this spider designed to work on this prop here, but the, the roof itself appears to be made out of a series of props. Brushes. And what not. Okay, I should probably point out that it looks like they're making very good use of the physics engine and source. And oh, good! I guess I'm with Merrick. Okay, 
And so our character goes off into battle with a bunch of people. And then surprisingly ends up completely on their own. It's, it's funny because I, I can imagine how they built a lot of this using brushes and things, and some of these are props, but, like, this is clearly done in Source, which is really neat. But at the same time, as a Source, you know, as a Source developer, it's, it's also interesting to see, like, how they did it. I actually, I, I won't lie, back in, in about 2008, I said it'd be really cool if somebody did an MMORPG in Source, but that it would be very hard to do because... You could only have parties so big. Hmm. But yeah, you could have lots of cinematic elements in it like this, because source and character animations. How did they fire the arrows around that corner? Okay, dying guy! Yeah! Interesting. I didn't notice they gave me a fireball for this. I didn't know that they would. They did that. I, when I actually first did this, I just beat the crap out of them with my staff. Because that's what the instructions say is, well, beat the crap out of people with your staff. Okay. And uh, with this character, I get two types of uh, magic attacks for now. The first is this magic arrow, and the second one I'm, I'm going to show you when I go up these stairs here. See, this is where a source has some limitations, is you have to break up the levels. Uh, I mean, they can be a little bit bigger than this, obviously. We're just going upstairs, and they could have technically made it so that I physically walked up a ramp, but they just felt like teleporting me instead. So what they do is they fade to black, teleport the player, and then unfade, and then at that point they also res, you know, res the monsters and stuff. Okay, here comes my big fireball. Boom! Surprisingly, that didn't kill one of them. A bit shocked, actually. Okay. Moving on to the next floor. Another teleport trigger. Very well planned out, like how if your camera gets behind a model, it'll still... Uh, it'll go translucent or transparent sometimes. There's a lot of thought that went into this, uh, in terms of how the camera handles and how it follows the player. Good stuff. Okay, next floor.